Wedding fever causes confusion between Flock and Flarkies, Monday on Mugeplug. Clipart chats to Ron Ash and Sunset Sweatshop. And Moriehi's plan to get rid of Imani backfires on Mubango. of South Africa, a peninsula juts into the ocean. A team of young explorers are preparing themselves to explore its beauty and probe its secrets. They will discover secrets about our own past and learn firsthand about survival. Robberg, learning about survival. <laughs> this time our team visits the Robberg Nature Reserve on the south coast in the Western Cape province of South Africa. Reveal to our team. On a sunny morning, the team sets off into the unknown. Okay, guys, let's find a nice spot where we can orient ourselves. In fact, let's go in here. Okay, guys, let's look at this map. Grab it. It's the old map. Careful. Careful. Let's orient it a bit like this. Hold it out. All right, now you can see the point over there. You can see the, see the sand here? Mm -hmm. And it says island, and that looks to me like an island over there. It shows that there's a footpath here. Can you see it? Mm -hmm. So I think this is the footpath we need to take. There's seals, there's Plettenberg Bay, and we're going to cross the peninsula over here. Okay? Who's going to keep the map? All right, let's put it in your bag and we're going to find a nice spot and you have to look after it, not only because we need it, but it's also a very old map. All right, let's go. The peninsula is an ideal place to learn about survival from a long time ago until the present. Okay guys, we are looking for adaptations. And here's a very nice one. This little plant can live in this very dry environment where, where it's hot and this one saves water how? Yes, it's a succulent saves water in the leaves <laughs> and it means that when, when it hasn't rained for a long time the leaves will get wilted but they will always still have some water and when, when it rains it, it swells out very nicely so it's a succulent a nice adaptation for plants and remember we are looking at how things are adapted and, and how they survive on this little peninsula As 
they walk along the beach, they notice something very interesting. There are lots of caves. There are something like a dozen caves on this peninsula where people lived through long, long periods of time, leaving little signs for us to come and study and try to understand how our ancestors lived. All the way from hundreds of thousands of years to the present, where people like us can walk and enjoy and learn. Okay, let's get going. This is one of the caves we were looking for. A very, very famous cave, Guano Hut is the name of it. And we're gonna go and see if we can get really close to it, and then I'll tell you exactly what's going on there. This cave is a, is a very famous cave, and there are a number of them on the peninsula. You can see the, the soil piled up in the cave, and that's called deposit. And deposit means something that was deposited there. It could be things that they ate. It could be grass that they slept on, vegetation. It could be firewood. And when you start to analyze it and you go down, you can, you can get the history through time of what happened in that cave. Here's something. Shells, isn't it? And these are shellfish called limpets. They live on the rock, and if you open them up, they've got lots of meat inside. So the guys who lived here, all they had to do in the morning is go straight down to the rocks, collect the limpets, bring them up, cook them or eat them raw, doesn't matter, and they drop the shells. This is a kind of proof that a lot of people lived here. And if we start digging down, we'll see through time when people started living here, maybe even get an idea of how many. Look, and here's something else. What do you guys think this is? It's rocks, very sharp. If you put your finger there, for instance, and then I'll cut it off just there now, with one fast cut. <laughs> and that's how people cut things. You can see it's really sharp, you can feel it. So now we really know people lived here, they made tools, stone tools. Okay, when they slept here, did they sleep on the floor or did they have something to sleep on? You mean our early ancestors? You have almost certainly that they just sleep on the floor. They may have brought some grass or something to sleep on. And they had fire. Even our closest primate relatives, like the gorillas or the chimpanzees, they don't know how to make fire. Luckily not, otherwise they cause a lot of mischief. <laughs> Yeah, it was fun going into the cave and I think it was amazing how our ancestors lived. And when archaeologists dug in this cave, they found some very interesting other things. They found ostrich shells, but not just ostrich shells, ostrich shells with paintings on them. Okay, let's go and look after our own survival and find a place where we can spend the night. Seeing how they lived, it's really good. Um, I don't think I would have lived like they did. It was really hard. Can't imagine myself sleeping on the ground and, you know, scary. Okay, let's get in here. You all remember that we're studying survival. So tonight, we thought that the, the, the best way to show survival is for us to find a place to sleep. And the best place I could find was this cave. That's the best place. So, so you can see where you're gonna just find a com comfortable spot. You, you asked about our ancestors and they just lay on the sand. So tonight, it's all right. is it all right with you guys? We just spend the night here. It's fine. Yeah, it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. It's perfectly fine. <laughs>
and I, and I know you guys would be willing to do that actually. Yeah, we're just crazy and, enough to do it. But just because you are all so ready for everything, the treat is over there is our house where we will stay tonight. It's a research cabin. <laughs> To be soft, keeps you comfortably dry and feeling comfortably protected. Hola, Zanzi! It's going to be a hot day in the big city. Digestion and heartburn? Eno gets to work in six seconds and works on the six symptoms of heartburn. So you can keep on living life non-stop. Eno, fight heartburn and indigestion fast. Savlon antiseptic liquid kills in seconds and protects for hours, leaving you free to live more. And it's formulated by Johnson & Johnson to kill over 99.9% .9 of germs on skin. Savlon kills in seconds, protects for hours. Savlon's trusted protection is available in a range of hygiene soaps now with a new look. is a welcome sight for sore bones. At least for tonight, our team will have shelter against the elements. charged. To save power, the girls opt for using candles. prepares a lovely meal, much better than our ancestors had in their cave. Wumpy keeps watch outside. 
Luckily, there is no danger here. <laughs> Another beautiful day, and the team cannot wait to start their exploration. One way to get to the plateau. <laughs> Going up the dune was really difficult. It's a wrong way. No, it's actually along there. No, <laughs> no I'm kidding. Here. I am so close to the sun. Okay, we take a quick break here and then it's a last little push and then we're on the plateau. We'll be right on top. We'll be able to look in all directions. That's good. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> okay, island behind us. Let's push on. Guys, I reckon it's the last push. I can smell those seals already. <laughs> it was really fun because at the top then I just felt like I'd achieved something. <laughs> Yay! Is this what a productive day feels like? Sure. Now on top of the plateau, right on top of the peninsula. Still lots of vegetation and keep your eyes open for tree snakes. Yeah, any kind of snake. I was really scared we were going to find snakes because I really don't like snakes. I just don't like them. Ah, guys, here's something interesting. Look at this beautiful plant. It's already late in the season, so it's lost its flowers. Nice succulent leaves. If you broke off a little tip, you'll see a sticky, sticky kind of uh, juice. Very bitter. But this specific aloe is very rare. It's endangered. But its name is Kanidut, which is an Afrikaans word, and it means... Cannot die. Cannot die. Exactly. And the nice thing, it's the emblem of the Khoisan. Because even though the Khoisan were the first people here in this part of the world, certainly in our country, when the Europeans came and people came from the north, the different tribes, they really gave the Khoisan a hard time. The Khoisan almost disappeared and that is why their symbol, their emblem is the Kaniduat. And what is our national emblem and the motto of South Africa? It's te kara te. And what that means is different people unite. Different people unite. And that is actually a Tom word. The Tom was a big group of San people. But the motto we still have. And the motto is. <laughs> it's a tough one, eh? <laughs> No, it is Te Karate. Te Karate. That's right, and it means? 
different people unite. Which is a really a nice one for South Africa. All right, let's go on. Okay, guys, here's something very, very beautiful. What is it? <gasps> wow, it's a grasshopper. I saw a bigger one. In oh, there. wow. Just a gentle, right, eh? Gentle. And what you guys can see is a head with a two antennae. What is this? And that is like a shield that protects the neck part and the thorax. Underneath it is the heart and a lot of essential organs. Really? And this is the it's abdomen like here. It's got little wings. <laughs> and he survives by being able just to change locality quickly. If there's danger here, I just go, I'm out of here. Pew! And he just goes. Shall we let him go? I think so. I think so. Let's put him back. Let's put him back right there. See what I mean? Any short, sharp pain is a sign of something not being quite right with the tooth. And that's usually the first sign of sensitivity. I would definitely say, please don't ignore um, any signs or symptoms. The likelihood is the condition is probably going to get worse if you do nothing about it. That's why um, I recommend Sensodyne in my practice. Sensodyne works at the very heart of the problem. And it actually goes inside the tooth and helps calm down the nerve right where we need it to act. Sensodyne is a brand that I know works. Parenting is not easy. Some days, you've got to be tough mom. Other days, gentle mom. But when it comes to fever, you need to be both. Cowpole starts to work on fever in 15 minutes and is gentle on the tummy. Cowpole, tough on fever, gentle on your child. <laughs> now I'm calling my lawyer. Ooh, I am so scared. And like, where's your lawyer? My lawyer is right here. Can't handle that. Problems with the neighbors, rental disputes, advice on maintenance matters, drawing up a will, clientele legal will speak up for you. SMS defend to 41446. We'll call you back. Krijg jou beeld vrijdag om meer te lees oor die kunstenaars wat eers komende zondag op SABC 2 in die kolle gaan wees. Beeld, my wereld. Let's look at this plant. I'm going to take just a little leaf. Now, grab a leaf and rub it and smell it. But it stinks. It's not <laughs> like medicine. No, rub it and smell it. <laughs> you see, he said it smells like horse pee. <laughs> and well, how do you know what horse pee smells like? <laughs> yeah, no. but it's Afrikaans word. Perifus. Perifus. Yeah, but you but you're so right. This this plant's name is Perapus. <laughs> it, it is the name people gave this plant. Did you know that? <laughs> huh? yeah. This is actually the name of this specific plant that that local people gave it is Perapus. I know how you can cook that. Just cook it in a warm water and drink it if you're healthy. Okay, I'll drink it, but you have to drink it too. Yeah. How about that? Deal. Deal, okay. All right, we got All a right. deal on Fizz that one. Fizz Fizz. <laughs> Let's see what else we can find. Wonderful. <laughs> yes, more on the crazy team. 
From the top, they will be able to zero in on the colony of Cape Fur Seals, from which the peninsula gets its name. Seals are mammals, just like us, they control their own temperature. They can spend a lot of time in the water because they've got a lot of fat and a nice fur. So that's, that's one kind of uh, adaptation to be able for someone like us to go in water. And if you compare it, for instance, if Joy spends a lot of time in water as opposed to Wimpy, Wimpy will be able to last a lot longer because he's got a lot more fat. <laughs> and cold burns up fat. You need that fat to generate energy. But it's really underwater where they are fantastic. They feed just like us, but it's modified now to be like fins. So they can swim with their feet and they, they fish eaters. Underwater is like a ballet if you're in the middle of a group of seals and they just swim and frolic. Just too beautiful. They looked very playful and <laughs> their flippers looked a bit like toes and that was really cute as well. <laughs> I think it would be really awesome to see a seal underwater in its natural habitat. The mothers give birth to the young on land because the young can't swim immediately, they'll drown. And they leave the young together, usually in a, in a group, and that group is called a crash, you know, like a kindergarten. And the mothers would go out at sea and they would come back and they have to find their young. And they usually find it by memory where they left it, but also by smell. And they would have to come back and feed the young. And that's how the young is going to survive, until they're big enough to start to swim and to, to catch fish themselves. My favorite animal was the seals. They were cute. It took a lot of time to get to them. It was worth it. I really enjoyed looking at them. And they're very cute, good creatures. And yeah. The seals are actually beautiful. And I want to see them again. I, actually, I want to go underwater and see how they're swimming underwater. Yeah, it's a real fail. Even more embarrassing than your fails. Ayanda is, is picking some parapus because she has heard that it's good for asthma. You can put it in your coffee, you can make a tea of it. No, just cook it and drink it. <laughs> Ayanda, she's really funny and she's a little bit crazy. And I think that's really great because I'm a bit the same. You could drink it with your coffee, <laughs> but it doesn't taste good. <laughs> oh, you see how you fail. The ant. <laughs> Come on! <laughs> Yo, that's a fail. That was a fail. I'm so sorry. <laughs> so we came to study survival, and we've seen how grasshoppers survive by just changing their locality. We've, we've heard about seals. Our early ancestors who live in the caves and now it's a matter of us having to survive, especially myself. <laughs> Not funny. Really Come back next time to witness surprising discoveries on the Roburg Peninsula, that narrow slither of land protruding off the coast of South Africa into the Indian Ocean. <laughs> and you see the same thing, it's hard to get off the rock. <laughs> <laughs> and remember, our mission is to find out about survival on this trip. That's the wreck of a ship, and that's a ship that didn't survive. <laughs> Shall if we get a magic,